What's up, everybody? It's your boy, 722 Marine here. <clears throat> and this evening, I'm going to talk about a subject that uh, I've been hearing a lot about lately, um, especially within so-called Christian circles. It's something that I heard before from cult groups like uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, especially. Uh, and the, the subject is, is hell a real place? Now, Jehovah's Witnesses say that... Uh, Hell is basically just a grave. That when people die, their body goes to the grave, and then they are what you in what you would call a, a soul sleep or just a state of unconsciousness. Or and what happens is to the soul is that you are completely the soul is completely obliterated or annihilated. That is just uh it's not there. You know, there's no no uh. Uh, self-awareness, there's no consciousness whatsoever. <clears throat> so that's the Jehovah Witnesses say that. And now there's people out there, like I said, that so-called Orthodox Christians that saying that hell is not a real place. And, and their logic is, why would a loving God send people to hell? <clears throat> and you guys know me. And my motto is we let scripture interpret scripture and the answer is simply yes that hell is a real place it is a place of eternal torment for uh unbelievers for god's enemies <clears throat> and so we can go to the scriptures and clearly uh show this i heard somebody say that uh the teaching on hell is traditional that because of tradition, we have taught this. You know, it's something that's passed down from generation to generation. And I will respond to that by saying, well, the teaching on hell is not a tradition. It's a doctrine uh, that is taught by the Lord himself, Jesus Christ, by the apostles, uh, and by the prophets in the Old Testament. But um, <clears throat> I want to look at uh, what Jesus had to say about hell himself. And we could take a look at Matthew 25, Matthew 25, uh, 41 through 46. And see what the Lord himself had to say about it. So this is what Jesus himself says about hell. Okay. Uh, Matthew 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepare, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was a hunger, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you uh, took me not in, naked, and you clothed me not, sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we... When do we see you hungry and thirsty and, or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then shall he answer them saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as you had did it, did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the right, righteous into life eternal. So we see that this place called hell is a place of everlasting punishment. Everlasting means, obviously, that it lasts forever. And so, if the punishment lasts forever, how could anyone say that a person is not conscious during this time? Because if you're not conscious, then what type of, what punishment is that? It's no punishment if your soul is asleep or you're not aware or not conscious of what's taking place to you or what's happening to you. Okay, let's look at... um. <clears throat> Also, Matthew 23, start, starting at verse 28. Matthew chapter 23, starting at verse 28. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Warn to you, uh, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say if we had been in the days of our fathers 
we would have not been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, you serpents, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? This is Christ Jesus himself talking about hell. And we see that he already said that it's a place of everlasting punishment. So how would anybody dispute what the Lord is saying? Either the Lord Jesus Christ speaks the truth and he is the truth or either he's lying. Which one is it? I'm on his side and, and believing that there is a place of eternal torment, a, a place of eternal suffering. And it sounds bad because it is bad. However, God is giving man is giving man every opportunity right now in this age of grace to come to him. And he sacrificed his only begotten son. He shed his blood on the cross. And he raised him from the dead so that we could be completely justified and saved through Jesus Christ. Also, um, Let's look at um, Luke 12, Luke chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. And it makes, and this I think is the most clearest scripture to show that hell is a real place of real suffering. Luke chapter 12, verse 4 and 5. And I say unto you, my friends, be ye not afraid of them that kill the body, and that after that have no more they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed have power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. He said, fear him that has the power not only to kill the body, but the power to cast you into hell. That's God. See, don't fear no man. We're not supposed to fear man. Man can kill the body, but he can't do nothing to the soul. Uh, that's very clear. Let's look at Mark. Mark 9, starting at verse 45. Jesus is making himself absolutely clear all throughout these scriptures that hell is a real place. And I've heard it said i haven't actually counted for myself but i've heard it said that jesus spoke more about hell than he did about heaven yeah i would imagine imagine that to be true i don't think people would lie about something like that like i said i haven't actually went went and counted the words but um let's look at mark 9 starting at verse 45 and it's, it reads, if thy foot offend thee, cut it off, for it is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two fit feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and, their, and the fire is not quenched. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Okay, now we see Jesus saying that it's better to go into heaven, uh, missing a member of your body, than it is to be cast into hell, having all your body parts. And this, this, what this is saying that he's talking about not literally your body, your members of your body, like your fingers and your hands, but um, members of relatives uh people that you are associated with so like if you if you have a, a brother or a sister and they are in sin and say a brother and sister that who we believe that is in christ and he's got a brother and sister that's supposedly in christ and they caught up in some type of sin and you bring that to their attention and you go through all the you know proper steps and measures to try to, you know, help get them out of that sin, you know what I'm saying, and they refuse, then you need to cut that person loose because they do what the Bible says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So we know that our friends have influence over us. And if we allow sin to go unchecked or if we don't uh, remove people from our company, 
who are supposed to be Christians who live in this sin, then eventually we're going to get dragged down too. So the Lord is saying it's better for uh, for you to lose one member of your body than the whole body be cast into hell. Okay, let's take a look at um, Matthew. Go, let's go back to Matthew 10 and 28. <clears throat> this dude, like I said, these are the words of Christ, Jesus. And we can, there's many other scriptures that talk about hell from the apostles, where the apostles talk about hell as well. But it, to me, it's, it's so clear, especially when it coming, it's coming from the Lord's mouth. And it's not any interpretation required with this. It's not, uh, it's not, he's not saying these things like in an allegory. He said, fear him who was able to, after he killed a body, to pile the power to cast into hell. That's plain and simple. Matthew 10 and 28. And it reads, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, how is this possible if hell is not a real place? My body is real. My soul is real. And they can be destroyed. My body can be destroyed. And obviously, my soul can be destroyed if the Lord was to cast me into hell. But I'm not going to hell because I'm saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I don't understand how anybody can read this coming from the Lord's mouth himself and come to any other conclusion than the one that is already laid out before us, that hell is a real place, that is a place of suffering and torment. Now, people say, well, how can a loving God do that? Well, the Lord's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Um... His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Just like the Bible say that as, as high as the heavens is above the earth, so high is his thoughts above our thoughts. That's pretty high. Because we know the heavens stretch out for countless, countless uh, miles or light years or whatever. And that's how far his thoughts are higher above our thoughts. The Bible also talks about and we know it's not a place of sleep or unconsciousness because the Bible talks about in Revelation the false prophet and the beast being cast alive into the lake of fire. Let me see if I can find that scripture. <clears throat> Let's turn to Revelation chapter 20. Uh, Revelation chapter 20 verse 10 and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever oh and also if we go on it said and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was no was found no place for them and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books are open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works and to see which were in it and death and hell deliver up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death who was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's plain and simple. The people were come before God to be judged. And if their name wasn't found written in the book of life, they was cast into the lake of fire to be tormented forever and ever. And to me, it's you know, God do what he want to do. He's sovereign. He created everything. He created the whole universe. Every atom, every molecule, every cell, every organism, every planet, every solar system, every galaxy. Everything belongs to God. He do what he want 